I need a team that I'm rooting for to need to win. So if I'm going to invest time and money, I want a team that they need to win. Joe Lake, we know that he's going to spend the extra amount of money uh, to go the extra mile because he needs to win. 49ers need to win. The Giants, do they need? They want to win. I'm not sure whether they need to win right now, and this offseason really hasn't answered that question one way or the other. Yeah, I know that sort of feeds the beast, but I guess I'd put this back on you. What were they supposed to do? I mean, if you, you can well, only they, offer so much money to a baseball player if he doesn't want to come, and I think that I, I, I think it's sort of the consensus now that Aaron Judge played the San Francisco Giants, leveraged the San Francisco yeah. Giants, got mm -hmm. his money for the New York Yankees. He was the prize fish. He, they went out and they set the bar. They they outspent the New York Yankees as far as the offer is concerned. I just don't know what more they could have done. That's fair enough, but in the case of Carlos Correa, I don't know where this is going to go, but it's pretty clear they, at the very least, mishandled it badly. Again, and not that the, the San Francisco Giants don't come with some warts, because this is a team that has a lot of money and hasn't spent it. They haven't been very judicious over the last couple, of, especially last offseason. But again, this, this offseason, if this guy's got a bad wheel, and if you find out in the 25th hour... Uh, I, I think it speaks more towards their metal as a team where they're not influenced by a fan base, not influenced by the fact that the press conference is in five minutes and he's standing there in the lobby with his family and his wife and his wife's his in -laws, parents. Yeah, his in -laws. that's the worst thing, as Craig points out. And the you Giants, imagine your father-in-law? Well, that, yeah. <laughs> that, that, takes some, that takes some onions, man. Yeah. And, and I think it, you need to look at this. In a different lens, Giants fans, and I know that's difficult to do, but I'm here for you, as I often am. Yeah. But think about it this way. How's it, how about the, how's this for a scenario, Whitey? Okay. So you get Carlos Correa. He has a good season next year, okay? You don't go to the playoffs, but, you know, it wasn't his fault. You need some more pieces. The following year, he's injured because of the leg, and they got to shut him down a little prematurely. The year after that, they got to shut him down three quarters of the season. The following year, he doesn't play at all, and the team isn't doing well. Now, you know that if the Giants aren't doing well, that you're going to get calls here at 95-7. Again, what's going on with the San Francisco Giants? There's going to be hate directed their way regardless. Now, if they find out you're only four years into a deal, and this guy's damaged goods, and it comes out, you knew that this guy potentially had a bad wheel, and that this could have happened, and you still signed him to a 13-year deal. We're only four years into it. Giants, what the hell are you doing? Where is the IR at at that juncture? Well, here's the thing. When you sign someone to a contract of that length, as they thought they were going to, they didn't. You know it's probably not going to go the length of the deal. You're trying to make sure you get the best of the player up front, down the road. You know, you got to deal with that when you got to deal with that. My point is, I don't think anybody would be assuming, yeah, 13 years from now, oh, he better be good. So there's that. Secondly, there's this. The leg, it hasn't been an issue, has it? I mean, he's been, he's been really good. I understand being prudent, but if the Mets do indeed come to terms with him and he goes there and he's productive, then even though the Mets had the same concerns, I don't see how the Giants would be off the hook because, all right, you had concerns, the Mets had concerns. You had him, you still lost him, and now he's on the Mets, and you've still had an offseason that leaves your fans going, that was it? So that's the problem. <laughs> I'm with you. Can you imagine if you're the physician with the Giants, and you're the guy who's going to have to sort of red flag this thing, and that's the last thing you want to do. I mean, we're sort of in this euphoric state. He's signed. You've got the second best free agent. Everybody's going nuts. There's the big press conference. You throw in the x-ray. You're like, wait a minute. I'll be right there with you. <laughs> and you see this metal plate Ruh -ruh. in his leg. Yeah. Like, what the yeah. hell is that? Yeah. He's playing with a metal plate. Now, let me dig a little deeper. And then you find out whatever it is that these these coconuts do for a living. However, you you arrive at this Dan's conclusion. first use of the term coconut. Yeah, we're only five one minutes of my into the show. Favorite things of working with them. What's the over and under that. on yeah. coconuts usage on a December twenty sixth? <laughs> we're five minutes into the show, but for a four hour show too. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I like the use of coconuts. Don't misunderstand me. So I'm just I see it a different way. I'm like, you know what, man? As much as we need to sign this guy, it's I know there's pressure on us. 
13 years and 360 million scahoots. Okay. That's, so that's a lot of coin. Yeah. A, you feel like they dodged a bullet because B, you're clearly a Giants apologist. That's cool. <laughs> as long as we understand where we are. And let me add, let me just throw this out there. Yes. Now they're void of a star. You look at that team, you're like, that'd be a really good team if you had a centerpiece, right? Conforto was an all star in 2017. You can't be an all star without being a star, right? But no, you're right. You're right. Go ahead. I like Conforto. I like that. I actually think that, and I'm not trying to be good cop, bad cop here. I sort of think this offseason, and Kim, don't we have to sort of wait and see before we say this is a good offseason or a bad offseason? Don't we have to like get sort of knee deep into the regular season before we say, wow, Michael Conforto actually fits into what it is that the Giants are trying to do? Mitch Hanniger is making them much better defensively. Suddenly you got Taylor Rogers, and I like, you know, you brought up Hendrickson, and suddenly you got, you know, you got some pitching. Uh, I like this baseball team. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but don't we have to sort of wait no. before it is no. we pass judgment on it here, on here, the offseason? I understand where you're coming from, but here's why uh, the answer to that is an emphatic no. It's because the Giants implied, I know they could easily say, well, well no, we didn't really say this, but it's clear they implied we're going to spend a lot of money. We got a lot of money to spend, and we want to spend a lot of money. All right, that's good because we know the Dodgers, who are kind of quiet this year because they're going to get a ton next year, but we know that they spend money. The Padres spend money. The Phillies spent money. Another National League team. Mets spent all this money. So good. All right, finally, they're going to spend money. They didn't need to create that level of expectation. And maybe they thought we're going to we're going to end up landing a big fish, but they didn't. So that's why you leave your fans with that empty feeling. Okay, I I'll give you that if they win a lot of games next year and Conforto are like, wow, he's great. And Hanniger's great. Maybe then some of that um some of that uh disappointment wanes. But right now in the offseason, it's like Oh my goodness! It's like Santa didn't. Come. Farhan didn't deliver. Santa may have come, but Farhan didn't deliver. So that's why it's a bad off season for him to this point. I just don't know what more they could have done. I, I really do. I think when we talk about this, we sort of talk in a general sense, and I get it. I I completely do. I just when you sort of pull back the layers, if Aaron Judge doesn't want three hundred and sixty million dollars, which is sixty more than that of the New York Yankees, and doesn't want to be in San Francisco because he bought into the New York culture, and if you do in New York, and you recognize the histrionics, nothing's pulling you away. Nothing's luring you out of the Big Apple, which I think he knew all along. So you weren't getting Aaron Judge, and that's on Aaron Judge, not the San Francisco Giants in my estimation. And I get it with the Carlos Correa at the last hour, you suddenly make this decision to pull the rug from underneath everybody, but if he's got a bad wheel, and if the New York Mets don't sign off, uh, sign off on this guy, then I think the San Francisco Giants are fully vindicated. But what if they do? Okay, you're right. Maybe they don't. But what if the Mets do sign them? What if they do figure something out? And then they got, all right, here's Carlos Correa. Then I think it'll be fair to wonder, why didn't the Giants do that? They had issues. And according to Scott Boris, this also works against the Giants. The fact that, as I know, in all fairness, they can't say a lot of things about the injury. But Scott Boris got out in front of the story, and he says, yeah, they came to us, and we gave them time to do something. They didn't do anything so if Correa comes to terms with the Mets despite the injury, then I think it'll be fair to say, why didn't the Giants do that? I would. So. The only thing I would say towards that, and again, as being the public defender for that of the San Francisco Giants <laughs> officially here this morning, this was time sensitive. So if this was inverted or reversed, and it's the New York Mets that were the San Francisco Giants and making the offer first, because what the Giants said is that we're not saying no, can you give us some more time? In other words, let's rework this deal because we'll show you. We'll give you the x-ray. This is why we got to come down from the 350 in the 13 years, okay? But Scott Boris had the offer in hand by that of the New York Mets who essentially said, hey, listen, if there's any hiccups with the San Francisco Giants, you know, Steve Cohn's like, I'm right here. Yeah. So it was a timing issue. Maybe. Yeah, if it was I, the I, New York Mets, sure. I think – you know, if it was the San Francisco Giants that were waiting in the wings, they would have had the luxury of negotiating and or renegotiating the deal with Carlos Correa. But because the Giants had absolutely no wiggle room to sort of barter with the New York Mets because they had another team waiting, I think, again, put them in this sort of lose-lose situation. But if you guys, and I'll say you because clearly you're on the payroll, if you Giants, <laughs> if you guys really wanted him then it would have been easy to at least say, look, Scott, we got this. How about this? Can we do that? And negotiate with him and try to figure something out. The fact that they didn't 
you're right. Maybe they're just being prudent and they're trying to figure out what to do. But the fact that they pulled out at that point, Scott Boris says, I didn't hear from them. That implies that eh, they got cold feet. And that's a perception that they can't afford their fans to have of them right now. Well, I don't know. They if- need to do something about that as soon as possible. And so far, they haven't done anything yeah. about that other than, hey, look, we got twins on our team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't that the feel good story of the holiday season? I love it, man. I used to, I grew up with twins, man. And those I, I grew up with bad twins. There are good twins and there are bad <laughs> twins. The sort of twins were like, you know, one guy didn't do his homework, so the other one would show up in class and the, the Yeah. He would just, you know, they could play games on TV. My teachers. cousins are twins and they would do that. Yeah. So anyway, shout yeah. out to the Morgans this yeah. This beautiful uh, December twenty sixth. I, I I just I don't come down as hard on the San Francisco Giants because I think if you really closely look at this. I think they were screwed, and they were screwed circumstantially. Not necessarily they were – They. I don't think they had any ill will intent in terms of not spending money and or let's just screw over our fan base. This is just circumstantial. Carlos Correa's got a metal plate in his leg. Let's just – can we talk about this deal? And the Mets are like, no. I, uh, we don't Craig have and I heard it was actually a paper cut in the sixth grade. <laughs> That's what it, it was a bad one. It was a bad paper cut. No stitches, but they had to use a three a sets big, of gauze. It was a the little yeah, big bandage moment. and all that. So it's just a bad look, and they have time to correct it. But that's the thing. Well, they don't have time. There's nobody left, unless you uh, want to, like you know, come out of retirement. I'm, well, I'm not supposed to say, but we've been talking about it. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, we'll see where that ends up, and between now and the resolution of the Correa thing. It's just rough for the Giants because you got all the teams in the division, like the Dodgers and the Padres, and they're spending a ton of money. Then you got a team like Arizona, and they're going the other way, developing their own players, which is what the Giants have been trying to do. And I think Arizona's way ahead of the Giants, of the Giants in that front.